and I think we're live. Hello there and welcome to Soul GPS. This is Ava and today it is my great pleasure to introduce you to a new colleague of mine and an inspiration as well. Her name is Candice Onida and I hope I'm saying your last name right. You can correct me. And um, <laughs> great, wonderful. She's going to give you a little bit more of, um, of a background, share that with you and her experiences. But I wanted to first just let you know why I had invited Candice to come on my channel and also what was the inspiration, the impetus that led me there. Basically, in my own recovery work, as I'm sure you know, if you've been uh, following me, if you've been with me uh, for the last few months, maybe even years, since the big fallout of my life where I hit rock bottom and was, uh, you know, working through finding myself again, I started to notice at some point that this recovery process at some point bridges into a very different paradigm, especially for women, uh, for men as well. But today we're going to speak primarily to women since that's our, that's Candice's uh, specialty is feminine empowerment. And there is this point of basically bridging into this other world that is free of trauma, at least relatively so free of trauma, where you get to experience a free, um, unbound, unconditional states of love and share that with other um, other people, ideally with a partner that really deserves you and will cherish you greatly. So I'm going to pass the mic over to Candice now so she can tell you a little bit more about herself. But it is, again, my great honor to have her here. I'm very excited about our time together and to also share with you some tips as to how you can transition from one place to the other. Thank you, Eva. What a beautiful introduction. And it's so it's so funny and lovely that you know, one of the most positive aspects of something like YouTube is we sort of, in, you encountered me on YouTube, right? And there's something that you felt resonated with you and with your community. And that's really what I'm here today to do, just sort of pass or, or create a bit of a bridge um, or give you a bit of a view or a vista into a different future uh, for you if you have experienced being in a narcissistic relationship. Wonderful. Thank you. And Candice, you had mentioned to me when we spoke a little bit before recording this video that you too have had an experience um, with a narcissistic partner. So you know exactly um, what it's like to go through this experience. Would you like to share a little bit about that? Yeah, it's funny because when we first spoke, I kind of realized it's like, well, you were talking to me about feminine empowerment piece. And it's like, well, I've been in a narcissistic relationship myself. So I know exactly where it leads us right like the um the tendency is that <clears throat> well for the type of us that end up in narcissistic relationships is the tendency is we end up taking on it all <laughs> as in whatever's happening we take responsibility for however we're thinking um we're the one that's um, in deficit um and our self-worth <laughs> and value is basically going downhill not rapidly, but actually quite slowly often. There's a real decay of our sense of ourself. And that only makes it worse because then we're scrambling to try and please the narcissist and our needs, desires, wants, our sense of ourself, our sense of our purpose, our ability and desire to really love and be loved. That just gets so, so buried. <laughs> that we forget, we kind of end up forgetting who we are, you yeah? know? And in lots of ways, in some ways, there were many factors that what led me on my search toward uh, feminine power and the understanding of masculine feminine polarity. But that experience in that relationship was one of them. Um, that particular relationship was, was a huge fulcrum in my life. Um, he ended up taking all of my money, taking my business from me, um, <clears throat> definitely my sense of self-worth, no sense of my feminine or my feminine power was left at the end of that. And it set me on a 10 year abysmal spiral of, of having to carve my way out of that. Um, out of which has become what I, partly what I teach now, you know, what I discovered for myself. And then I went, wow, I really want to show other women how to do this. I really want to show them that there is not just a light at the end of the tunnel, but there's literally a, a new operating system 
one that of the feminine and then how to get out of what I call the false feminine, which the narcissistic relationship often throws us into and then re-arise in our true feminine, arise in our queen and actually learn how to be really empowered as the true feminine and that that in and of itself attracts a very, very different kind of person to you. So my work is really about the inner work. So I always say you have to be prepared to do the inner work to have outer results. Absolutely. I'm so, I love what, how you just put that. And I'm so thrilled about this work myself because I find myself at the threshold of that in my own life. And I have been telling um, a lot of the people who listen to my videos how, you know, after we do a certain amount of work, literally it begins to attract a very different uh, groups of people, types of people into our life. And I think it's a direct reflection of the work that we've been doing on ourselves. Excellent. And what's beyond that is just, it just sounds and feels so incredibly exciting and it feels positive. And, and here's a big one, it feels pleasurable. Whereas mm -hmm. before I found mm -hmm. that there was almost like this addiction and a loyalty, definitely loyalty to pain and suffering because we've been doing it for so long. So now shifting into that more pleasurable <laughs> Uh, way of being is um, it feels it feels so different and I think like you I think you had mentioned this turbulence uh, I'm not sure if it was you or if it was someone else's work that there's this this process of moving from one to the other that just feels a little shaky a little bumpy it sometimes can be difficult to find our way and you had mentioned it took you about 10 years to finally come out of that but you've come out so much stronger and more powerful yeah, it's funny, isn't it? Because it, this sort of turbulence concept is, um, the thing is we get really used to being down. Yes. <laughs> in, in the false experience of ourselves, the false feminine in my models, we, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> we become incredibly accustomed to um, these beliefs that we are really unworthy, that perhaps this is not for me, that I'll never find a great man or great partner. Maybe I'm really just not built for that. Um, and especially on our own, as you know, is when we go down, we're crying, we're suffering, and it becomes the norm after a while. You do that for a year or two, you start to believe that that is the only way to exist. And the, the pain that you're experiencing is... Um, unique for a start and that it's unresolvable and that there we cannot see when we're in the bubble of that kind of suffering that, that there is an existence that is different and that's why people like ever and myself uh, sort of really set we, we set ourselves as mentors and coaches to show you the path to lead you toward this new way of being and the thing is the turbulence is often that the weird thing is that suffering is familiar. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so we're saying, no, there's a different way to be. And then when you start to tread that path, whoa, it feels a bit unstable as you're unhinging yourself from this old way of being and thinking and acting and perceiving yourself. Like you literally are perceiving yourself through the false lens. Right. And there's a new lens. There's, there's just a and that's why we, you know, we have ways like we do private coaching, we have courses or whatever to show you a pathway and we hold your hand every step of the way. You're not expected to do it on your own. I always say that transformation work, like spiritual transformation work was never meant to be done in a vacuum. You know, we're meant to do it in community. We're meant to do it with support and help. And if it is a blind spot in your life, which we all have blind spots in aspects of ourselves, then seek help, you know, seek mentorship. You've obviously found yourself here on Eva's channel because you have been searching and, you know, you found somebody that you resonate with and she's a wonderful person, a very adept coach. So there is a new world. And the thing is, you know, if you're inside a room with the doors locked and all the windows are covered and closed and you're there long enough, all you relate to is that darkness. All you relate to is that room that you're in. It's just darkness. You don't even know there's such things as windows and doors to get out of, right? And then someone like Eva comes along and she, she peels the curtains open on the window and goes, look, there's something else outside the window. 
there is something else outside the window and I really encourage you to look. And at first you're kind of peering outside, but you're still peering outside from inside the room, right? And then she comes to the door and she opens the door and goes, no, come through the door. <laughs> you can come through the door. I'm with you. I'm going to take your hand and you can walk outside into this much bigger, broader world, a broader experience of yourself that doesn't have to go on like this for the rest of your life like this. Like that breaks my heart when I consider I think of anybody stuck in a spiral that they believe is a conclusion to their existence. Exactly. Thank you for much, so much for saying this because that is exactly what I see so much in this community of people who are recovering from narcissistic abuse is that they get to a certain point and then they feel like, well, I'm okay just being on my own or I'm going to be alone for the rest of my life. And that's okay because I prefer that uh, to being hurt again. And it's like, I understand that for a period of time, it's okay to be in that sort of hibernation mm -hmm. stage to get to know yourself in a way it's actually necessary to regain that self-trust. But there comes a time when it is really safe, just like Candace is saying, it's safe to open the door. First you peek out, you take a step, and then you begin to explore again because the world really is full of amazing people who can't wait to meet you. And another thing I wanted to also ask you about is actually the topic of self-worth because that comes up a lot. And a lot of women write to me and they say things like, you know, I'm I just turned 40 and, and, um, and, you know, I hear all, all, over, all over the, you know, this is also, this is a societal pressure. This is a lot in the me in, in the media. We get that a lot, but you now I'm over 40 and I'm just, I don't feel like my worth is what it used to be when I was 20. And, and my narcissist would tell me that I'm now too old to find love oh. and it's yeah. never going to happen. And it's just like, Oh, what do you have to say about that? Well, first and foremost, I met my partner when I was 50. <laughs> yeah. right? You don't look a day over 30, but oh my yeah. God. Yeah, awesome. I'm actually 52, right? So oh, that's amazing. Um, and I know, trust me, I, I've had those experiences of uh, maybe this is not for me. Maybe it's, it's safer and it actually feels better to be on your own than be in an abusive relationship, right? I get that. I get that. And there was something you said before. I'm just going to rewind a tiny bit there. But there's a huge difference between hurt and abuse. Mm -hmm. There's a big difference between feeling hurt and abuse. A human existence is going to encounter hurt feelings from friends, from family, from partners. Yeah. We do it. We do it inadvertently. Even the best, kindest, most deeply consciously communicative relationships we still will trigger each other's scars we'll trigger each other's stuff abuse through something like narcissism mm -hmm. is a very very different thing okay now whether they're conscious they need often that's the whole point is they're not conscious of their behavior that's abusive behavior and one of the things you need to start to distinguish between is there's abuse that hurts you and there's living <laughs> and we want to encourage you to live and to have courage i just did a video the other day um that i'm upload on youtube about courage and vulnerability and they're the same thing you you have to be vulnerable to actually have courage right yes. and so what Eva's trying to teach you is to recognize the narcissistic behavior so that you can not choose it again, or that if you're in a narcissistic relationship, to choose to exit the relationship, because you can't try to educate a narcissist. They're, they're by definition going to be like that. But to educate yourself in order that you can make empowered choices, and it's still painful. You can still love a narcissist. You can still care for this person, but you can decide that there's a boundary here, and the boundary is created by your self-worth mm -hmm. that you value your time your life your the way you're treated the the way that people communicate with you the way people treat your body your sexuality and all of these things once you learn them once you feel strongly about what those things are for you and this is not some there's not some rule book out there this is your relationship to yourself 
And these things, the, the stronger you are aware of those and the stronger you hold them within yourself, you are creating boundaries. Okay? Mm -hmm. These are boundaries of worth. <laughs> They're boundaries of self-understanding, recognition. And, <clears throat> you know, if we spent a whole lifetime, perhaps lifetimes, coming to where we found ourselves in these narcissistic patterns with some, or in a relationship with a narcissist, this is the tricky thing, and Ever and I spoke about this other day. We have to take responsibility for our side of the equation, which is that really. It's kind of the self-worth piece. So if you feel that you need to take some time, and I did this, I took years away from relationships so that I could, I had this time, I had this one year in that period. It was a couple of years, but one year I said, you know, New Year's Day, I went, oh, this is the year in which I fall in love with myself. Mm. I literally, the year was about me in my relationship to myself, learning about self-care, self-love, implementing my, my, the, the feminine arts and skills that I now teach in myself without any desire to date, to have it in a dynamic and polarity dynamic in relationship. And in that time, I just became really clear on who I am, uh, what my boundaries are. And by the way, let's just be clear about boundaries are something that aren't about pushing people away. They're not something that are hard or closed. Boundaries are super healthy. It's like somebody starts swearing at you in a communication, you go, that is not okay with me. If you can't communicate with me with respect, then I'm going to walk out of the room and uh, we'll get back together when you can talk to me with respect. This is, a, this is a boundary that has to do with how you want to exist in the world, right? This is a good thing. Boundaries are good things. <laughs> They're good things. They mean you know yourself. They mean that, you see, when you have a bound, boundaries like this, you, as ever was saying before, we start to attract very different people, friends, into our life. We start to attract different men toward us, who I call kings, men in the true masculine. Because when you start to vibrate differently toward the true feminine, you start to attract true masculine men. And truly masculine men, who I call the king, right, want nothing else but to adore, cherish, provide and protect, protect you. That's what they want. The, the true masculine, that is, that is the most delightful thing in their existence, is to serve the feminine in you. And they will fall over sideways to do this for a feminine woman who's standing in her feminine power, who stands as a queen. And I know that when, and by the way, one of the biggest things the narcissistic relationship does is it just degrades us slowly toward the false feminine, okay? Yes. And then we find ourselves behaving like the princess or then really the maid, like we, we feel like we have absolutely no value left, right? Yes. And, and that brings us, this is, this is great. You, you just said that and that's exactly how it is. What a, what a different paradigm, right? That what we're used to, if we've been in these relationships to be the queen and to be with a man who wants nothing more than to serve and adore and cherish completely different reality. So, um, mm -hmm. so this brings us um, into the feminine archetypes, which is um, something that you've developed and I would love for you to um, let my audience know a little bit more about this work and, and we'll have a free gift at the end of this a video that we will announce so that people can get a taste of your work. Absolutely. So what happened for me it was sort of on my pathway of digging myself out of the abyss that had to do with um, some of the things we spoke about before is I realized that one, I, I, I was overly masculine. I was in man mode in a lot of my life and that was causing a couple of symptoms like burnout, exhaustion, overwhelm, and that I was attracting the wrong kind of uh, situations and especially relationships into my life. And then as I started to sort of, you know, sort of go, well, what, is, what, is, what does feminine actually mean? The very first thing I realized is that there were no role models out there of the true feminine, very, very few. So I did a massive amount of research and then I also started to apply my long-term training, spiritual training, and went, oh, what is this? Well, what's, you know, what is feminine? What does that feel like? What's, 
What's it like to, to be that? And one of the things I really discovered when I start to listen to people talking about masculine and feminine, okay, these two important polarities that we that exist inside of us personally and they exist inside of us in dynamics in relationships, right? Is that there is so much confusion out there about what masculine or feminine even meant. Mm -hmm. And then I, you probably don't know this about me, uh, Eva, but I've been trained um, in astrology for over 20 odd years. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And as an astrologer, there's one core concept that I was trained in my very, very specific esoteric style of astrology, which is there in each planet is an upper or a higher and a lower mode of the planet. So Venus has a higher mode and a lower mode. Mars has a higher mode and a lower mode. And I literally had this brain explosion one day in the middle of meditation. And I went, oh, there's a higher and a lower mode of feminine. There's a higher and a lower mode of masculine. Yeah. This is why people get really confused, right? And so what came of it is a model I developed that creates clarity for us. So that it's called the feminine archetypes, okay? It's the false feminine archetypes of which there are two the maid and the princess, and the true feminine archetypes, the queen and the priestess. And they're a little bit different, but essentially there's this lower mode of the feminine and there's this higher mode of the feminine. There's a lower mode of the masculine. There's a higher mode of the masculine, right? And so what it helps us do, this model, is to go, oh, I am fighting right now. I'm demanding. I'm I'm. I'm I'm behaving in a way where I don't believe my needs are going to be met. Oh, that's the princess behavior. Okay, so we, we learn this model not as a, a, any judgment or to judge other people, but to understand ourselves better, right? mm -hmm. to understand where we're at. And I created the model so that there was a very clear pathway into the true feminine toward your queen and I promise you even if you don't believe me right now that there is a queen there's a true feminine inside you that just needs some encouragement out to be revealed in you and if she's become buried then you're going to need a little bit of help a little bit of encouragement a little bit of mentorship or perhaps community to help her out. So that's essentially what the what I call the four feminine archetypes. It's a framework that's behind everything I teach. Yeah. Okay, brilliant, brilliant. Thank you so much for sharing this. And it really does make sense, right? It really does make sense, especially when we're bridging the two paradigms, this, this work that I'm really starting to explore and, and talk about more and more in my own work is how do we go from the lower to the higher? And now lower doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad. It's just these are behaviors that we've picked up uh, because of the situations we were in, because yeah. of the background we come from, and, and a variety of reasons. So Absolutely. thank you so much for sharing this, and thank you for coming on, on my channel to speak of this. I really value your time and value your expertise, and I think there's so much that you have to share with this world. So uh, what I'm and going to... I wanted to offer them the... the the yeah. way to learn a bit more about the archetypes. Is that okay? Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, would you like to um, introduce that? Yeah, well, there's, this, okay. there's a little quiz I've created that's really easy. Yes. It'll take you like two minutes to go through. It gives you a first brush through to see where, which archetype is dominant in you right now. And this is not a fixed thing. Um, and after you put your email, your best email address in there to get the results, I'll then send you a bunch of emails that educates you about the archetypes so that you can understand it a little bit better. So it's powerfullyfem.com forward slash quiz. And I um, totally invite you to take the quiz and would love to be able to give you a different perspective and a bit of a, a different angle or pathway toward your true feminine and your queen. Yes, and that's, that's wonderful. And thank you so much for that. I've taken the quiz and it was very educational. And I love the emails that followed because they gave me a little bit more of an idea of my inner landscape. Um, so that was highly educational. It was really quite thrilling to, uh, to know where I fall on the spectrum. So, so thank you for that. Thank you for all your work.
All the links are going to be down below this video as well as um, a biography of Candice so you can know a little bit more about her. There'll be a link to her website, link to her YouTube channel, and also a link to the quiz. Um, so for now, I just want to thank you so much for being here with us. Um, I hope you enjoyed uh, this interview and it gave you some new ideas, some new perspectives as to what awaits you. I just want to give you a little bit of a taste of that. And uh, let us know uh, whether you like this material and whether you'd like to have more of this content content, uh, share your thoughts, your own ideas. And of course, I always encourage you to subscribe to both of our channels, um, like the videos as it really helps to spread this information um, across the web. That's how the algorithms work. The more activity, uh, the more um, people see this material. So again, thank you so much for, for being here with us. Candice, thank you for your time. And uh, yeah, thank you. And, um, and hopefully we'll do it again. Yes, love to. <laughs> All right. Have a beautiful rest of your day.